over to me. Okay, thank you, first of all, to having me actually, um, to inviting me actually for your webinar. I will try to give some, yeah, I mean, we have just half an hour, so a short view how I see it actually. Um, and then I hope we'll be able to discuss as well. So I'm available later on without any issues. Um, if somebody has any questions, let us do that. Um, as you said, it is part of the pre and post Viva series session topics. Here are the dates, everybody, I guess, knows it. Um, so I would not like to lose too much time about what I would like to talk today. I hope that learning outcomes will be at the end clear. We'll be trying actually to explain a little bit about how the doctoral students should read and inter interpret actually our examination reports. That means VIVA examination reports. So I'm today a little bit in between. Uh, I'm on the side of the students most of the time, but sometimes when I'm an examiner, uh, I'm doing actually my job as well. I have to do it and I explain, I hope actually kind of in a proper way, even my views, despite being kind of torn between two sides. Uh, that's what I would like to do today. Um, just to understand our views as well as to understand actually your views. And I will try to explain how you should make us um, happy and satisfied that uh, examination reports as well as then the revisions are actually uh, getting much, much, much um, nicer and easier. That's the idea behind it. So as I said, you will understand how to read and interpret the VIVA examination reports, how you'll be able to uh, respond to everything what we will be kind of requesting. And uh, what I will try to tell, explain a little bit is actually that sometimes we have just one topic which might be improved or maybe just, I don't know, one word or one comma is missing or something like that. But on the other side, uh, whenever we come with an idea that maybe the research question is not really perfectly fine, then you have to do something else. You would probably have to go into the literature review. You might even change the methodology. You might be actually kind of requested to think about the title and things like that. So it depends what are the comments um, which would or do then kind of, um, yeah, request different reaction from the side of the student. So as I said, let us talk about the structure shortly. First, uh, I would try to explain how we see the VIVA and the examination of uh, thesis. After that, we'll talk shortly uh, how the outcomes might be that means what is written in the feedback. And then we will shortly talk about some examples, how you can address in a nice way, in a proper way, all the um, requests and ideas the examiners might have and um, kind of ask you to do it. And it, uh, then the last, the last part actually for my talk will be just one or two slides to tell you how to write the replies to the um, examiners. So first of all, as I said, let me try to introduce our views. Because as you see in the examination cycle, um, actually most of the things are done by you. That means you will be submitting, you will have your VAVA and you will be performing there. Then um, that is actually the topic of today's lecture, you know, lecture um, webinar how to tackle the revisions. And then you will have actually at one point of time, um, the enjoyment, should I say, that you will be able to yeah, revise and resubmit the, the thesis. And um, there are few areas where university is taken care of. And these are actually, uh, I would say, not so important for you. Um, but most of the process, as you can see, is done by you and you are kind of really guiding the whole process. Um, the idea of the VIVA is actually that you are able to defend, and I'll talk within the next slide a little bit in more detail, what do I mean with that, your study and your end results. 
that's important means everything what we are asking about how you did it when you did it why you did it you should actually kind of know as well as everything about your results in order that we can see whether you do really understand and have actually knowledge that you were able or maybe you will have to do a little bit more let me uh, in the area of your research as well as you know what is extremely important is actually that you show the contribution to the knowledge and here we might actually ask few questions, where do you see it, how do you see it, how you will use it, who will use your results and things like that. So these are the main ideas why we do a VIVA. And another one is extremely important that with the plagiarism. You know, uh, whenever we do not have VIVA, we are always a little bit more nervous uh, as examiners, but having VIVA, then we can ask you anything and we expect that you will be actually answering our questions. And the next slide will be talking about that expectation we have towards you while we are doing it. So what we expect is really that you show understanding, that you are able to interpret every of our questions, that you are able to justify why you do or you did actually different things uh, and explain. And as uh, it is said, actually to defend it. So that's for us extremely, extremely important that you are able to answer any of our questions. As I said, why you did it, what you did, how you did it, that you are really familiar with the literature because that is extremely important because based on that you have built actually most of your study anyway and on the other side that you understand your methodology, why you picked it, how you implemented it, um, how is it actually yeah, leading to the results you will be um, or you have presented in your study. So that is um, yeah, the main idea of Aviva, but theoretically, I mean, I always see it from the perspective of a student and I say, I mean, the Aviva should be actually an enjoyable event because theoretically you have done it. You know everything. So why should you be kind of nervous or scared? And that's the idea behind it. You should just show actually what you have done, why you have done it, how you have done it, and that's it. And then, um, yeah, the next slide will be talking or touching why and how can the examiners evaluate everything, what we have just mentioned right here, all those actually points. I mean, it is clear, I guess, for all of us, how a university selects examiners. We are selected based on our expertise in your thesis. So in your research area, we should have actually a lot of experience and expertise because if we do not have that, the university should even not kind of invite us to do that. Um, definitely, whenever we pick examiners, we always think about who is good in, let's say, qualitative or quantitative methodology. And if you have used actually the mixed methodology, then you will, we will pick actually two different guys. Somebody will be actually really um, good in qualitative, the other one in quantitative. So we know how it runs. Um, farther on, most of us have already examined some theses and were actually part in different FIVA committees. So we can compare, we know what are the levels, we know what we can ask, we know how um, pleasant or maybe how a little bit less pleasant we can be. Then we have read the thesis every single word. I mean, I read every single word of every thesis. And then would mean that I really know it. I understand what's going on. I understand what you did, how you did, why you did. But on the other side, as I will say, um, I see maybe sometimes some weaknesses and um, I'm sometimes uncertain why you did it, how you did it. And that would be then actually kind of translated into the VIVA where I will be asking or we will be asking you in order to um, clarify and explain why and how and things like that. So it's extremely important that you understand that um, theoretically, not theoretically, practically, we do not want to, um, Andreas would say, grill you, but really want to help you that actually finally your thesis will be much, much, much better. And um, in which areas we do grill you, uh, we have actually criteria 
from unique general criteria of quality for a DBA or PhD, as well as actually specific criteria for each university. And based on that, we will make the recommendations and set actually or define uh, how to classify the thesis. And don't forget, I mean, it is our, as I wrote here, duty and responsibility to do it in a proper way. Because after you have passed, you will be doctors. And that is something I would say quite a special thing, but it has to comply to the standards of the university as well as actually generally how we see the quality of a thesis. Uh, and that's why we'll do it actually in a, in a really proper way, as I said, to help you to improve your knowledge, to help you to have a really, really good uh, thesis you can be at the end proud of. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so when you actually read the thesis and uh, before the person is actually uh, invited to the, to the Viva, um, do you already make your, um, let's say judgment uh, or result or, and or recommendations um, prior to the if, discussion? If we, come, if we come to this point, once again, I read it, I go through it, I make my notes. And as I wrote here, I definitely prepare my questions because based on that, what I have read, I have to ask you if there's something not clear, if there's something what is, as I said, a little bit uncertain, something like that. Definitely. I mean, I know everything about your thesis. I mean, everything, maybe not because I have some questions for you, but theoretically I have, I have um, my picture of the quality of it. And I definitely know what I will be asking you during the viva. Sure, I have ready questions for you. Okay, we thank you. Do. Thank you. We all do. I mean, that that's the way how it goes. You know, you cannot come actually to the viva uh, not being prepared. And that that is viva for actually that if there's some uncertainty, you will be able to explain it to me. You will be able actually to answer the question, and through that I will see, as I said, that you have knowledge about the methodology, that you know everything about the topic, that you are actually, I don't know, have read those 300 papers or something like that, and you can actually explain that to me. And yeah. based on yeah. that, I will then actually cross that question of mine and say, okay, that's clear. I don't have to worry that anymore. And this might probably not come in the report because um, it, yeah. it, 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 it's clear for me. Yeah, actually, uh, actually the question was um, regarding whether uh, you believe that the quality of the thesis that has been um, submitted and what you have read is um, of the standard, and then you rather, you know, you decide whether, okay, I, I, I believe that uh, this is um, either a pass or a fail. I, I'm trying to understand uh, whether you already make a decision, whether this um, is a, a quality a thesis um, to be defended is, is, is See? my question. See, I mean, uh, um, I wanted to say that sentence a little bit later on, but actually uh, there's none of the examiners who would um, like to fail a student. That's just no go. We don't do that. I mean, we are really trying to improve the work and that's it. And because of that, I will try to ask you the questions where I was not sure or certain um, how you did it or why you did it or if that was run in, done in a proper way or not. And in case you can actually explain that, even with some weaknesses, then we will say, okay, we understand what happened. Because of that, we will be asking you to improve that part. Okay? I, did yes. I, did I, I answer I, your question? Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, and, and this is perhaps a, a little bit of a gap, I think, at least for my, myself. I, I'm not, can't, I can't really speak on behalf of other students, but at least try to understand if you get to this stage, at least, it's um, suggesting that you know we have uh, developed something, and you know it's worth uh, you know the body of knowledge that uh, um, you know everybody wants to to see. And theoretically, um, as I said, the viva. I mean, the quality of the thesis you see it through the document, okay, through the re through the written word, and um, some smaller things, let's say, or sometimes some bigger things, as well as the plagiarism, will be checked during the viva. So um, 
there has to be really something extremely, extremely and extraordinarily bad happening during the Viva that um, somebody would say, based on the Viva, you are not able to pass. Usually we examine and we actually build our opinion based on the uh, written work. Okay, great, thank you. Sure. Um, so that goes now a little bit in your, in your in the direction of your question. I'm really interested, okay? As a examiner, I would never accept it. I mean, I always ask when we all do that, actually, what's the topic? Can you send me actually a few, uh, definitely abstract and few pages? And then if I see that that's actually something I'm expert in, I can evaluate it. I can um, see what has been done. That's my field of expertise. Then I uh, will take it. If not, I will definitely not take it because it's a lot of work with uh, 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 preparation for a viva and, and the whole process. And uh, don't forget what's here, good. We always enjoy reading good thesis. So I would like to read, as I said, a perfectly fine thesis, ask two questions, and that's done for me. If there are some weaknesses, that means I have more work because I have to assure that the quality will be there. And I always am keen actually to learn from your thesis because it's always something new. It's always a different uh, perspective whatsoever. So we are interested. And as I said, we would like positively, as I wrote, and constructively contribute to the quality of your thesis. So that's the idea behind it. I mean, as we said, we have some set of criteria. We have to stick to those. I mean, that is check, check, check levels are they are definitely clear, generally. Uh, but whenever we come with additional ideas, then we would just like actually to help you to go farther and, and, and be actually better. And you learn as well additionally. So that's why I would like to say maybe it's a little bit, uh, uh, I don't know, should I say crazy sentence here? Theoretically, we would expect that you are happy and that you appreciate that an expert has read actually every detail of your thesis and try to give you actually really a constructive feedback where you will be getting additional knowledge, you will get additional skills, feedback and things like that in order to improve it. And I mean, you know, the VIVA is always a discussion and it's always so nice actually to see how the students are able to explain things, how the students are motivated, how they are engaged with their work. And that gives us actually, you know, really kind of a pleasure and, and, and enjoyment being there. I mean, sometimes, yeah, it goes a little bit in another direction and you are sweating because um, maybe the question is a little bit tricky, but that's not the idea behind it, okay? We never want to kind of, as I say, um, how should I say, harm you or whatever. Our idea is actually just to see whether you know how it goes and um, yeah, make you sometimes aware of positive things and sometimes of some weaknesses. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, as I say, um, just come, come. After the Viva, we will kind of agree on the outcome. And the outcome can be, as you know, no revision, minor revision, major revision, major revision with additional Viva. That means resubmitting the work. And I will cross out this one. Okay, we don't Hello. actually usually, we don't think about that <laughs> most of the time, uh, because um, even if, if the things are going a little bit, actually, um, I would say uh, wrong, we are really trying to push the students and give them another chance. And that is actually, if you have another one year to resubmit, we are sure that you will be actually able to do it. Um, so, and then based on that, once again, on the written part, as well as the YWA, you will be actually receiving a written report. In this written report, everything will be written. That means all the revisions, all the modifications, modification we would like actually that you do and perform. And there will be, as I will say in the next slide, some general recommendations and a detailed list of every single recommendation we expect you to do, as well as the date or how many months, months do you have? Is it three, six, 12 months? Um, when we expect that you will be kind of resubmitting the thesis. So everything will be clearly, clearly explained uh, and, and, and written in the report. So what's in there, that is actually what you should, you have to uh, stick to. Okay. Um, I have one question. Sure. Yeah. 
so these modifications, if you if you don't mind going back one slide. Um, yeah, so so these uh, either minor or uh, major uh, revisions that you have to make um, is uh, so so basically if the student just um, follows the um, uh, the the uh, um, the idea of the the revisions uh, that are made by the the panel. So as long as you follow those and they comply to those, it means that you pretty much um, have uh, sure. completed your uh, your thesis. Definitely. I mean, definitely. I mean, if, if, if the question, if, if you will have another viva, that is when the work is really weak, then uh, you will have to de defend all your, let's say, changes yeah. and revisions once again. If not, it will be done based on the written part of the work. Okay, so, uh, and any, any um, feedback we get from the panel, um, is it possible or have you seen within your experience that maybe uh, students don't agree or? I will talk about that. Oh, okay. Sure. okay. You can always do that. Okay. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, um, Andreas, Jackie, can, we, can, can, can I talk a little bit longer? Is that okay? Sure. Sure. Okay. okay, thank you. So don't if, if you don't push me, I'll go into detail through everything. And when we have questions, let's do uh, it in a proper in a detailed way, if there's an interest. Um, here, I, I mean, as I said, general and detailed list. And you could get actually kind of minor te textual or just structural amendments. You can go actually in a specific sections you have to do. And I'll talk a little bit later about that in more detail. You know, uh, if it requires substantive revisions, then you will have to go a little bit deeper, probably. But there is a difference sometimes in substantive revisions where that is not really essentially changing the conclusions. That's another thing. Would be rather isolated in comparison to something where you will probably have to think about even different conclusions. So it depends, as I said, how we see the work. Um, that would be substantive revision and improvement where you might be requested to, um, I don't know, do even some additional research, definitely rewriting, sometimes reorganization of the chapters or um, unpleasantly even reconceptualization of the whole work. So, but as you said, or asked once again, everything will be stated, everything will be clearly defined and expressed actually in the feedback report, don't worry. Everything what's there should be done. The rest, um, you don't have to take care of. Minor revisions, just a few ideas. Reformatting the chapters, not a big deal. Revision of literature, two, three weeks, you can do it actually. Improvement in declaring research objectives and statement. I'll even show one example of that. You will probably have to think a little bit. You have to rewrite it. You will have to justify it with additional literature, things like that. Improvement in the methodology. That's minor revisions, okay? That means here you will have probably to add a little bit, explain why you use it, maybe uh, add some references in order to justify the selection and things like that. And the rest is anyway, uh, nothing special, insertion of missing references and things like that. I mean, that's, you know, unpleasant work. I agree with that, but uh, does not influence the, let's say, um, opinion about the quality of your work. Then we come to the major revisions. That is a little bit more challenging stuff. Here you will have to um, yeah, be a little bit more engaged with the whole thing and it will take probably a little bit longer. As I said, let us touch some of them. Con conceptualization. I mean, if that was not really done in a proper way, that might actually um, yeah, lead into quite a lot of work. It can lead, that's what we are saying, you know, it's an big kind of a big issue in a way and you will have to work probably on few chapters might be as I said title might be um, even research question might be because of the different research question you will have to think about the methodology even and things like that so that will be a little bit more challenging refocusing literature review maybe um, you have spoken about different things but not on really uh, important things in or around your topic. So we'll say, I mean, you know, go a little bit deeper, explain that in more detail. Uh, many, many, many times we ask for justification of research gaps. 
that they are really clearly justified. Why do you want to do that? Because the research gaps are kind of, you know, guiding the whole thing. And then based on the research gaps, you will probably have to um, yeah, maybe redefine a little bit the research questions and go back to the literature and things like that. I hope there will be not two big things regarding your experimental design and methodology, but if that happens, uh, that might actually cause that you will have to do some recalculations or reanalysis of your data. Um, what would mean that the results might be changed what would mean that the discussion might be changed? What would mean that the conclusions can be changed or have to be changed and things like that? So, you know, as I want, just want to say that major revisions might sometimes um, yeah, request that you um, not just work on one chapter, but that goes actually, you know, into different areas where you will have to, um, yeah, improve things as well. Removal or restructuring chapters could be. I just remember my last PhD when I read it for the first for the last time. I said, "See, let us merge discussion of the qualitative and discussion of the quantitative," and that uh, was done. And and the lady passed actually, uh, so that was done as well. So things things like that, rediscussion of results. That was when I was previously talking about uh, contribution. The contribution has to be seen. Is it um, doesn't matter in which direction it goes, is it theoretical, practical, is it both, uh, but it really has to be seen. And many, many times we just say, um, please work a little bit on clear, clear justification, explanation, highlighting actually what are your uh, or, or contributions. So, as I said, let us go kind of through the list how that should be done. First of all, I would like really to stress that, and that was actually the questions from before. It's written all corrections, okay? Really, as Hans asked, actually, really, please do not pick them, okay? Do not pick the nice ones, the easy ones, or something like that. Definitely not all have to be actually uh, addressed. Discuss them with your supervisors, supervisory team, how you will do that, how deep you have to go, they will give you guidance on that. Sometimes you might need a little bit more clarification and um, it depends on the university who will do that. Uh, usually, I mean, sometimes even you can contact actually your um, examiners because now you do know them, you have met them during Viva, but usually that goes actually um, through the supervisors or PhD office, HDR office, uh, it depends how they actually, actually kind of call it, uh, for some clarifications. Okay, do that. The next step, definitely, after you understand what you have to do, under you, everything's clear, the supervisors have discussed it with you, prepare a detailed plan for the period. As we said, is it three months, is it 12 months? Depends, chapter by chapter. Just do that and we we'll say stick to that. Okay, you will have some float in there, but try to stick to there and really try to work on that because uh, it's, the time is always short. The next step, usually, I mean, we advise work closely with your supervisors, just get support, whatever is done should be actually reviewed really soon, that you know that you are there and then you can actually focus on the next step. And follow the plan, as I said, do not forget, everything has to be done on plan and you have to resubmit on time. Do not be too late. That's really important. Um, yeah, I just included one sketch just to make you, to make you, uh, how should I say, column. Now, right now, you are here. That means your motivation, as we said, level is actually at the highest. Um, you are almost there. When you get the report, that will actually um, yeah, decrease a little bit, definitely into the negative, uh, but doesn't matter. You are almost there. Um, so, as I said, you are way above the average right now when you are actually about around the, the, the uh, Viva. Don't read the text. That was just an idea. Better not to read it, okay? And something else, you know, it is not just you. It goes every single student the same way. If you read those seven steps, I mean, we could uh, have five or seven or 10 or whatsoever, doesn't matter. It's always the same thing. First of all, you are 
totally actually, uh, you know, out of everything. You cannot understand it, what has happened. Uh, you are not happy, you do not believe, you are actually uh, sometimes even a little bit angry or uh, very angry and things like that, but that's it. That's always the same thing. I mean, when I get the reviews from the um, examiners or let's say reviewers of our publications, I'm actually there as well. I mean, but at the end, the idea once again is after, uh, let's say, you have passed actually those three stages, then you will understand that maybe one or two comments are making sense. That will be the first, let's say, um, step towards starting working on it. Then you will say, okay, maybe another one, true, is not, is not so wrong what the guy said, okay? And then you will say, what can I do? As it was written, you have to do all of them anyway. So start doing it as soon as possible. And when you will finish, you know, what will be there, actually, you will be extremely happy because you will see that the whole thing is much, much, much better. Uh, not just you will be happy, even the uh, examiners will be happy and that's it. So that is how it goes up and down. As we said, up and down all the time, but at the end, um, you are done. You will be kind of happy. Okay, any questions so far? Yeah, actually, I have a question, <laughs> believe it or sure. not. Um, um, I, you know, uh, one of the things, because I'm on the latter part of my thesis now, so I'm, I'm just doing my reflection and the conclusion, actually. Um, and, uh, you know, up till now, I, I take a lot of my supervisor's uh, um, feedback, um, recommendations, uh, and everything. But, you know, when you, when um, the, the outcome of the VIVA, even if it's, uh, for example, major revisions or very, uh, very major <laughs> revisions, what does it, how does that impact the, uh, the supervisor uh, themselves? Because, you know, obviously we're taking a lot of their advice. Um, and if it comes to the point where we have to do a lot of revisions uh, after the VIVA, um, does it, does, does it mean that the quality of the supervision is not great or um, See, how, I, how, how, I, could you address it? How, how could you address this? Um, I, I, I mean, I have my opinion on that. It's clearly, uh, and my opinion is totally clear, but um, I don't know if you should discuss things like that here. Uh, as I said, for me, totally clear, you know, uh, when, when, when during the first hour, when, a, when, a, when a student comes to me, it doesn't matter at what level, I have always said, after you have finished and the reviewers or the examiners read the thesis, in case it is good, the examiners will remember your name. In case it is, as you mentioned it, not at the level, all of them will remember just my name. And I don't want to have that. I hope I have answered your question. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I can I kind of understand the gist of what you said. Um, uh, and 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 that's it. Nobody, nobody. That's can... it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, and, okay that 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 that's the answer. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. We sure. had Petri with a question. Sorry. We had also no, Petri not a question. no, not exactly a question, Jackie. But just I was wanting to respond to Hans because this is typically a situation that I faced. It doesn't mean that there was something wrong with the supervisor's suggestions or advices. It just means that it was a different perspe perspective. That's what I was trying to say. So it's more on how you're going to, uh, you know, look at how the overall thesis comes out as. So I've come through the Viva and come through the major revision part two. So yes, I think what has been said so far is perfectly right. It does make a difference. Um, and it comes out with a different perspective. It doesn't mean it is wrong because your supervisor could have had a different learning. If he's a quant specialist, if you're doing mixed methodology, the kind of outcomes that come out might be different whereas your examiners yeah, but, might be action research oriented. So um, both ways, they're not wrong. It's just that does the thesis come out as a better outcome in the end of the uh, we, we, major modifications? And if it does, why not? Yeah, that will be my input see. on that. Uh, as I say, I, 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 let, let, let's continue. I, I, have my, I have a different view on that, VG, uh, but yeah, it's okay. Um, you know, I, have even, I had even four actually guys around me when I was primary supervisor. 
because I was weak in some areas. So it's okay. Let us discuss that maybe at another point. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess the supervisors are guiding the students and that's my answer, the final okay. answer. Okay? I, I understand. Thank On you very topic. much for, for explaining. Yeah. Um, okay. okay, so let me... Uh, for especially for the pressure cooker, we, we cannot hear you. I don't know. Nini said something, but I cannot. I'll play the mic in background noise. So, if okay, you'd like to okay. so I can continue. Okay, thanks. Um, now I prepared some examples how to address the revisions, just in order to give you. I will not go in every detail. You can actually read the slides afterwards. And whenever you have any questions, you can always come back to me. Um, but I just wanted to show, yeah, some clear, okay, these are the revisions done, the uh, comments done, everything is actually, um, yeah, real stuff, let us say that. For example, the first one, a nice one. It was just improvement of grammatical nature. That means instead of research gaps, I, instead of research gap should be written research gap. And that is actually kind of a nice title of the student. And um, he changed something. The next one was the same one, was kind of just around the, uh, what factor is the national community because the students wrote what uh, factors are the national community. He improved that. And that is, um, you know, a thing which theoretically many, many times the examiners even do not uh, check because we do expect that the thesis comes from the uh, yeah, proofreader, native uh, proofreader services. And we even do not usually bother with things like that, but it looks like that actually the thesis was um, written in a good way. So the examiner had to say something. Another one, for example, was the examiner's comment that uh, given research statement was not actually um, well justified. So he asked to some additional relevant literature, a clear, I guess, indication. And that is how it comes, okay? It is really clear what it should be done. And that is then the student's reply where he said, thank you for your valuable suggestion and advice on this. I have now enhanced and added actually all that literature uh, into the text. And um, how the text looks like after that was, for example, that's the example. Everything what is in brownish was added. And based on that, I would uh, assume, or I mean, that's a pass anyway. So the student has revised it in a proper way. A simple thing, isolated thing, just add, improve the justification for your research statement. The next one was, for example, nice. It, you see, actually, even I mean, Hans, that goes maybe in your in, uh, towards your um, question. You know, you see, even how the examiners do write that actually they are happy with your work. For example, in my opinion, the author has made all the necessary st steps of a scientific research, and that this is clearly contributes to the relevant literature. So, what would you like to have more? However. Some recommendations from my side could be that we add a fourth limitation, for example. And he mentioned that three or three limitations, A, B, C, which have been already actually considered. And then he said, maybe you can add another limitation. However, this does not diminish the value of the present study. Okay, that means the work is nicely done, but maybe you can make it even, even better. And then the students reply, a nice, kind, polite one. The fourth limitation is proposed by examiner has been added as a fourth major limitation, his dissertation. Therefore, and he justifies where, what he did and things like that. And then he has added actually this text as a fourth limitation. And I guess the examiner, after he has seen that, that, that was actually added, was happy, he read it and said, okay, exactly. That is what I was kind of expecting. Okay, so uh, as I said, I will show you a few 
ways. Some of them are actually in tables. Some of them are actually kind of text. And I always try to show um, the comment coming from the examiner, then the reply coming from the uh, student, as well as the changes in the thesis, so that you get a little bit of feeling how it should uh, be done. Then another one that is, I mean, nothing, I would say nothing major, but what he said, he said actually kind of, you know, rather lengthy. So you are presenting the things right now. And that could be it, although useful, that's important, although useful, so nothing is missing, just a little bit too long, should be shortened. And then he goes farther and he said, then in the next chapter, you were kind of farther explaining the details of the same thing. And that is kind of not necessary. So try to shorten it a little bit. Okay, so another suggestion to make it more focused, to make it actually um, yeah, clearer for the reader. But another, I would say, rather a small, a small change, which is though influencing two chapters. That means in this case is influencing the literature review chapter as well as actually later is influencing the methodology chapter. So on both sides or both chapters, some things have to be done. And that was the student's reply where he actually nicely said um, he shortened the things. Okay, following examiner's advice should be there, reviewer advice. So sometimes twice said, and he said condensed and is relevant farther to that stuff. However, on the other side, he said the farther reduction was not made because that could kind of influence the justification. Okay, that goes a little bit towards your question before Hans, where you said, do I have to always comply or agree with the reviewer or with the examiner? So you don't have to, but uh, be kind of cautious and careful, discuss all those things where you do not agree with your supervisors um, that you do not um, yeah, say something what might not be maybe um, really sad and the examiner had kind of a good idea. Then the next one, for example, around the chapter one, the introduction lacks structure and order. Okay, and some necessary stuff is not there. So the next question was based on the, um, regarding chapter one, what's the purpose of the study? You know, that was not clear and make it actually more simple. So that would be examiner's comments on chapter one. And then the student has answered and said, okay, modified, I have modified and added notes to address the examiner's comments to make the chapter more structured and to present the case probably by highlighting significance, purpose, study, and things like that. So now he did it in a proper way following probably even the subheadings and things like that. And then he even says what has been uh, clearly done. Okay. And that would mean that the next the chapter looked something like that. Okay. Here we start with chapter one and here we end with chapter one in this case. And you see in blue, the changes are mentioned. So many, many things have been changed actually in order to make it yeah, suitable to make it better. And based on that, the examiners were actually satisfied and that student was actually um, yeah, passing as well. Okay, and then that's the last, the last example coming from me. Chapter five, the same thesis, qualitative analysis to be justified in the methodology. That means that was not well enough presented. Would be good to add a table exhibiting the themes underlying in there, blah, 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 and stuff like that. So do that as well. That means he was doing qualitative analysis and clearly, I mean, you just have to present all the topics you have to present actually first codes and then topics and then themes that has to be there. It was not there. Uh, I mean, now we can go back to the question, is it student or is it the supervisor? But uh, let us not talk about that right now, okay? Maybe we can, we can do that at another time. And the uh, um, explanation or the answer coming from the student was explanation added to methodological approach was there, why we use the quali 
qualitative analysis, we corrected those mistakes which were linked uh, to the citation. And the table of teams has been added. Uh, you will see a little bit a weak one, but it's there and uh, kind of explained how or what was the result of the uh, thematic analysis um, using that table. So that was the first part where he was trying to explain a little bit about the qualitative analysis. As I said, everything what is in brownish is the answer. And then the next part about the thematic analysis was actually added as well. And the table which was requested is there. See, if I would um, be the examiner, I wouldn't be really happy with this one. I would say, let us go a little bit deeper, but um, it looks like it was good enough for that examiner. So that was my last example. Uh, maybe it went a little bit too fast, but uh, you will be able to download the slides or watch everything once again in order to understand even how it is written. Um, and and uh, yeah, to understand how those things have to be kind of tackled. Once again, the idea is that sometimes you can just fix one small thing, let's say in one chapter or even in just subheadings or something like that. But sometimes that might imply uh, or yeah, request that you will go across two, three, uh, sometimes even more chapters. It depends once again on the quality of your work. Okay, and then um, just shortly with two slides, how I see the students should reply to make us um, yeah, satisfied. The first one is not the one I would like to have. For example, examiner's comment was there. In terms of contents, the PhD thesis should at least contain three papers or three important chapters. To me, present version looks like a single paper or single chapter in the relation to the conventional PhDs. Okay, that was the comment coming from the examiner. Um, that was my student, okay? And she she replied in the first phase where she was still, 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 still very, 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 very unhappy or even very angry. And what she wrote is actually, and it is not required to have that many papers or an extensive theoretical involvement as suggested by the examiner is not required, okay? That was her reply. And when I read that, I said, please lady, let us be a little bit softer, revise that. Uh, and uh, from Jackie, actually that nice reply came. We were more, maybe, we were not, we were maybe not so um, politically correct, but that is a nice reply, uh, how it should be done. So what I want to say, do not be too angry when you write things, be really polite and try to explain in a way that that is maybe not requested. And definitely it was a DBA, so it was not a PhD. And that's why kind of theoretical underpinnings and stuff like that are not requested in that way. Okay, so soften the things, soften the things. Be nice and polite. You have already done everything. So now you can revise everything what you have done. And based on that, you can then write it in a proper way. So um, yeah, kind of the last slide what I'm trying to a little bit express my views, how you should um, reply. So after you have digested, it will take you a while, but uh, you should, because uh, you cannot, you cannot actually uh, work in a focused way whenever you are in a bad mood or even uh, having a lot of anger around you. So after you have digested the comments and suggestions, you should once again, list all corrections and suggestions. All of them have to be tackled. All of them have to be replied. All of them have to be um, whatever it is, okay? And as we said, do not pick and choose and definitely not just the easy ones or something like that. All of them have to be done. As we saw, reply in detail to show your really commitment, understanding, knowledge in the topic. Maybe in the first thesis, you didn't have time or you forgot or whatsoever, but now you were advised to do it Go deep into that, and based on that, you will be able to answer it in a proper way. Um, we mentioned the role of the supervisors, extremely important role. So discuss with all of uh, with them all your uh, changes or your new 
let's say text, whatever it is, maybe analysis, just um, you should get approval from them. And then check once again, everything, just in order that you can kind of, you know, see that you have tackled all of them and uh, then you are theoretically done. And don't forget, that's what I said, reply in a polite way. I mean, definitely in a professional way, but a polite way, because um, see it from that perspective, see it from that slide where I was talking, what is my motivation actually to start doing that? Once again, it is a lot of work. I will not talk, talk about money, okay? It's definitely not worth it, okay? But it is really our genuine interest to see what you have done, to see how we can actually, um, yeah, improve the thesis, improve the work, as well as how we can actually support you to gain some additional knowledge. And that's why I guess it is uh, kind of nice to be uh, polite and do it in a proper way because we don't want to kind of, as I said, harm you. We just want to improve the stuff. And then that's my last slide, which will make you definitely not very happy, but that goes rather from the perspective now from the supervisor perspective and support the supervisors as well. Um, you know, here you say, I'm done, that's it. And then whenever you come here to see your supervisor, I hope it goes like that to the, I don't know, 10th time, um, still you won't be probably totally, totally ready. But at one point we'll just say, that's it. It's actually very, very well, let us submit it and let us have soon a celebration. So with that, I will finish and say all the best for your process where you will be um, yeah, resubmitting and finally graduating and celebrating your success. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Can I just ask, from the time of you um, submitting your amendments, when will you hear back if the examiners have accepted it and it's okay? Uh, that depends. That depends totally on the uh, university and university's processes. So I'm not really um, clear how that runs in the Liverpool. Uh, that depends. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe um, Andreas or Jacqueline can help me here, but they are usually, usually the uh, examiners get clear uh, time periods. I mean, with, with our university is one month. So it depends how that uh, is actually at Liverpool. I really cannot tell you that. Thank you. Sure, welcome. I have a question. Uh, sure. could, could you please uh, kind of share a little bit more details on what exactly an examiner means when they say conventional method of writing a chapter? So this, I've got this feedback in the discussion chapter and they've listed a little of some points for me, but then in the end they say, but it needs presenting in a more conventional discussion chapter. So what does that word conventional, like I know you had that particular that, phrase in your comments too, so. As a general kind of, you know, which, yeah, I mean, for me, you know, if, if, if I mean, the discussion chapter is one of the most important chapters anyway. Yeah. Um, because in the discussion chapter, you're really, showing your contribution to the literature or to whatever it is, your contribution. And you are actually kind of trying to do that in a way that you are, um, sh 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 using actually all other or many yeah. other, let's say studies and many other researchers, researches, and you are using a lot of citations in there in order to show that that is actually aligning, not aligning, contradicting, adding value and things like that to the, to the um, knowledge in your area. So if you go, if you go, I mean, I always, I always, oh, how should I say, spend quite a lot of time with my students that we finalize that in a proper way. As, as I said, one of the most important chapters, especially when we're talking uh, about the PhDs. Hmm. What, what I would advise you is that's the simplest way to understand what they meant. Mm. That you go and take 10 journal papers mm. 
from really good, uh, highly ranked journals. Okay. And, and read the discussion there. And based okay. on that, you will definitely get kind of a feeling what is a common and well written discussion chapter. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. That's the idea behind it. It definitely has to include uh, your results, and your results are kind of compared or seen uh, or evaluated through the light of other studies and many citations. That's the idea behind it. No speculations, no nothing, just clearly showing what okay. is a, your contribution. That's the best way. Read then good journal. Oh, papers. no speculations in the discussion chapter. Okay, all right. That's what I say. I, I, I just, I, I mean, that, but that, that's somebody else, man. I, I guess Arlene said something like that. Is the view, or no, you said that. Is the view of a, of a examiner. I, I do not allow, I do not allow, will I say, my students to have speculations in there. What's okay. there is okay. there. What you can actually show, justify with your, um, your study, your results or results from other studies, do it. But just don't write might be, could be, should be, potentially. I don't like that. Yeah, OK. And that would be definitely, uh, you know, I would say when I examine something, I would say no speculations, please justify or remove. Okay. Um, one I have student. A... Yeah. Hello. There was one uh, student asked the question: How long will it take? Uh, will it take to uh, get the examiner's report after ten days, or to get the viva date after? I can help you with that. Okay. So my, sorry, my sure. question. Can you repeat the question? It varies by university. Hello. It varies by university. No, I can help you with the student with the UOL. I, I can't underst couldn't understand the question. Can you repeat that question? No, I was just asking from the point of um, doing the revisions that the examiners have um, asked, if you've gone through as it's described, how long from the point of sub resubmitting everything will you find out whether it's been successful and accepted? It depends. Okay, you uh, uh, from the YY did submit within 10 days, the wire report, but uh, from submitting the YY to get uh, ex uh, YY date, it takes about three months. And that does vary by, yes, that also varies by university as well. Sorry, no, I, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not being clear. I'm not talking about the Viva date. I'm saying today was about, a, um, when you've got revisions to do. So you've done the revisions and you resubmit the re revisions. I'm asking from the point of you've resubmitted your revisions, how long does it take to know whether- See, I, accepted I, I, I mean, I, I would advise you that you contact actually uh, Liverpool and ask that question because mm -hmm. they have a clear standards. We always, I mean, as an examiner, I know university says you have three weeks, please reply within the two weeks, for example. Mm -hmm. Or for the first, for the first, for the first examination report, I have seven weeks, for example, or I have two months or things like that. So every, every I mean, they have a clear, so to say, expectations um, to the examiners. So just write that and they will- That's you. fine, thank you. Yes, it, it does vary by university. They can be anywhere from two weeks to three months. So it yep. depends on your individual university. Exactly. Um, um, I have one more final question, um, if you don't mind. Um, sure, sure. You know, uh, generally, because this is a um, action research, uh, uh, you know, uh, thesis, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, the, the whole idea is that um, somehow you not implement per se, but, uh, you know, at least you have some impact on your organization. Um, is it possible, uh, and, and I'm trying to understand this, uh, and I say this because of my situation, but is it possible that um, a minor or a major revision uh, may occur because the, 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 the reviews or the panel believe that, um, you know, you don't have enough impact on your organization um, and you have not implemented, uh, you know, what an action research for, you know, um, a, a research should do? Is it possible? Uh, is it just a question? It can, it can be. It can be, okay. It can be. 
I mean, as we said, you don't have to implement it, but uh, there are ways that you are kind of convincing the panel. Yeah. What you have done, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. So basically, you, 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 um, you know, you gen. I mean, obviously, generally, every have an idea about, uh, and and this goes back uh, back back to the problem that you um, originally stated, and um, you at least give an idea to the reviews that um, you know this is your intention, let's say, um, and uh, you may have made some improvements uh, within within your um, organization and, and, that, and, and, and this is what you want to do for the future that that goes back to that slide when i said that we receive set of standards from each university and they tell us actually what is their focus in a way and liverpool definitely has a focus on action research and uh, because of that i might theoretically see the work in a little bit a different way let's say if the action research is not there, but there are other clearly stated and justified and, and, and actually elaborated contributions. But because it is Liverpool, I have to focus actually more on the action research. And then I would come with a comment that that and that and that should be done a little bit different in that way. Okay. Did well, I, I understand. Did I okay. so, yeah, yeah. So I understand. So you're basically an external examiner. Uh, if you had to come to um read a thesis from university of liverpool and i have to comply to their specifications or less specifications oh, okay. for requirements good good okay 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 and okay great thanks welcome ostian perhaps uh worthwhile clarifying that this is valid for most of the universities with whom you have been working that you get recommendations from the universities on how they see their problem no to be no no what? I mean, you know, generally, generally, we, we I mean, uh, that was the question before uh, coming from, who was there asking about, uh, I don't know, I forgot, uh, uh, Vigi, I guess she said that. Uh, it, it, it meant for a DBA and PhD, you have kind of a general view, what is actually acceptable, what is good quality, what should be there. Um, so most of, mo in most of the, most of the cases we are, examining in that way but every university has its own let's say at least policies they have their policies and those policies or procedures for examiner examination are always sent to the exam uh, to the examiner if they have some special let's say focus like in in case of liverpool then you have to uh, incorporate that in your review as well Okay. But so generally, 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 the differences are not uh, big. That means theoretically, I mean, I read them, but uh, there would be no need to read them. It is kind of a common sense what is good and what is not good. Thanks for clarification. Uh, Jack, shall we stop the recording now? And as we are more in the discussion anyway already? <laughs>